In this first video, we're going to go through a course overview of the data science modules. And I'll put a link to this. This is the GitHub site where you're going to be able to find the overview of the course there. It's 01. All right, so uh, I want to give just a first of all of an introduction to basic data science machine learning skills. Uh, we're going to be taking data and then transforming it into something that helps us make a decision or actionable information. And data mining, we have this cross-industry standard process for data mining or the CRISPR-DM that has six phases. You first of all start with a business understanding of the purpose of the data science project. And then you move on to data understanding. Assess what data is available to address the business case. And then we move on to data preparation, some exploratory analysis, feature engineering, transformations. So we're going to do that in the class as well. Uh, we also have modeling. We uh, select and train regressors or classifiers that transform the features into some type of predictive output. And then we evaluate. We test the models with various criteria to see how well they perform. And then the final one, which is deployment, where you move to production phase to deploy models in data pipelines. <clears throat> so data scientists work in many of these different areas, and uh, some just specialize in one of these areas. And it's also a loop as well. As you go through and do more modeling or evaluation, that may update your data understanding or your business understanding about what's available and how it can be used. So we have these 12 exercises that are designed to be completed in about two to three hours total, about 10 to 20 minutes each. But you can skip sections if you have the necessary background. So we first of all have overview this lesson. These are links that you can select them and go to the GitHub website and just be able to preview some of the content. Okay, um, data analysis, visualize, prepare. We're gonna cleanse, scale, and divide the data. We'll do regression. We'll talk about features. Uh, what are the inputs to our model that we're going to be able to use to predict uh, something like in classification where we want to try to predict or cluster uh, the data. We have interpolation as well where we have data and we want to be able to interpolate between those data points. And we have solving equations, differential equations, and then time series. We also have a final project here, uh, and that's going to be at the very end. You're going to put together all of your skills to help you do a design problem. This one is to determine the thermal conductivity of some materials, and um, I'll talk a little bit more about that later. So Python, uh, if you're in Jupyter Notebook, it isn't the web browser that's running Python. There's actually an underlying executable, and you can determine where yours is if you just do sys.executable and you can print that and figure out uh, what is actually running these commands. So the next thing we want to figure out is what is the working directory. And it's probably the same directory that you used um, that you where you're storing your current IPython notebook that you're running. But you can also change your directory and go to a different active directory. Okay, so um, also, there's um, also some Jupyter Notebook files to help with the TC Lab installation. If and I'll talk a little bit more about package management um, later. There's also some frequently asked questions. So the next thing we want to move on to is, is package management. Okay, um, I'm just going to go ahead and delete this. You can hit D twice, and it will delete a cell if you don't need it. Okay, so package management. Um, in, it's important because there are so many different packages out there that can help you with data science and sometimes you'll read something online and think, oh, I'd like to try that. So this is the purpose of this is to help you install that package and be able to run it. So for example, um, if I want to install Gecko, which is a machine learning and dynamic optimization package, I would do python -am pip install Gecko. And you would do that from something like the Anaconda prompt. Okay, so I'm just going to bring up the Anaconda prompt, and if I did Python -m pip install gecko, then it's going to 
uh, go out and get the latest one and install uh, Gecko for me. Okay, um, but you can also run this from a Jupyter Notebook. You do the exclamation mark in front of it, and then it's going to run it as if you were running it from the Anaconda prompt. So let's just try that. Uh, I'm going to insert a cell below and then paste this in, and it will run the same thing that I just uh, ran from the command prompt. Okay, and if you want to, if you want to be sure that you're running, you know, with using your distribution of the Python kernel, um, you know, in here, up, up here at the top, you can switch, um, you know, where your kernel is located and where you're running. So uh, for those who would like to be particular about that and make sure they're installing in their own uh, package, then you can uh, identify where the system executable is and then run from that. Okay, so um, let's come down to the next one. If you want to install a package, okay, here's the one that we just uh, entered. All right, and uh, if you want to list the available packages and versions, you do the pip list. All right, so there they are. Here are all the versions of the different packages that come with Anaconda by default, and there are quite a few of them, okay? And then if you ever want to uninstall a package, so let me uninstall Gecko. You have to put the dash dash yes, otherwise it'll freeze up your Python execution because it's gonna ask you a yes or no question. And so to just answer yes, you can do dash dash yes. All right, or you can install a prior version. So version management is important because sometimes the version of Python is not compatible with the version of the package that you want to use. And so here is how you put in the version number that you can go and uh, collect, it'll collect that and then install uh, that version for you. Okay, you can also upgrade a package. If you're using a package, you want to get the latest features, you do dash dash upgrade, and that will go out and get the very latest version for you, the latest stable release, and it will install it along with the dependencies. All right, so um, pip, uh, just a summary, you can do, you know, you can leave off this python dash m if you want to. Um, you know, this is just a better practice to uh, leave it there. So um, you know which Python is running that, okay? But or you can just do pip, like install and then package name. All right, so let's install the temperature control lab module. We're going to be using the temperature control lab for many exercises in this course. You can get it from Amazon, or there are a few other options as well. All right, so the temperature control lab, we are, are going to do, uh, first of all, to try to import it. And if that doesn't work, then we will install uh, PySerial, TC Lab, and uh, others, and then try to import it. If it doesn't work, uh, sometimes you need to restart your kernel. And so this code will try to restart your kernel for you. Okay, so I'm just going to try to um, have it collect PySerial, it'll collect TC Lab, and it installed it, and it has imported TC Lab. So this worked right here, and so it didn't need to restart the kernel. All right, let's uh, test the LED. If you run this and your TC Lab is plugged in, uh, you only need the blue cable for this one. The LED, okay, so it's just uh, this plugging in and my LED is on right now unfortunately you can't see it uh, but it then it just disconnected after that five second wait all right so now we want to do an activity we're going to turn on the heater one and read temperature T1 before and after a 10 second pause and you need to connect this white cable as well there's going to be a white uh, plug-in don't connect down here to the lower jack uh, make sure you do it here because that's going to be power to your heaters. And then you connect the cable, the USB cable, to the power uh, here, the uh, power converter. And, um, and so we're going to uh, now go ahead and run. Um, okay, 
We're going to run it. Uh, this has a 15 second pause right here. Okay, but I'm going to just switch that to a 10 second pause. All right, and then I'll run it, and then let's see if this um, this will ha have a temperature right here. It well, isn't going to increase very much. It's only 10 seconds that it's waiting, uh, but it did turn on the heater, and it just increased it ever so slightly. Okay, if I run it again, I'll see that it continues to rise in temperature. Okay, it's already at 25.73 and then it'll continue rising. It takes a little bit to just start uh, going up. Okay, but if you're not getting a temperature increase, then uh, definitely check your connections. All right, so here are some of the functions that we're gonna use as part of the temperature control lab. Now this is important because this temperature control lab is what we're going to use to collect data for our data science analysis. Every uh, student is going to have one of these and um, or if you don't have one there are some sample data sets there that you can use so uh, these are the the basic things you're going to connect to the tc lab um, there's an led function that you can turn on the led between zero and 100 percent there's heater one heater two you can read the temperature one or read temperature two or close the lab if you use the with statement then you don't need to uh, close it. Okay, but let's um, let's go ahead and do this one. We're gonna blink the LED five times for one second each. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and connect to the TC lab, okay? With TC lab as lab. All right, that's gonna open up uh, the lab connection. And then I want to blink the LED. So I'll go lab.led, and I'll turn it on to 100%. And then I also need the I'll import time. If you didn't have TC Lab imported, yeah, you could do TC Lab, but I'd imported it up above. All right, there's lab.led, and then I'll do time.sleep, and let's go ahead and do one second. And then we'll do lab.led, and let's go ahead and do zero, and then do another time for sleep of, uh, I'll just put in a 0 0.2 second. Okay, now I want to do this five times, so I could copy this code five times if I wanted to, or I could make for i in range five, and have a for loop. And if I want to select this and then just hit tab, it's going to tab over. Okay, so this is going to blink five times. And, um, you know, I could put in here something like this, LED on. Okay. And uh, let's go ahead and just do one other thing here, just so you can see it from the screen. I'm going to do from IPython. And this will be display import clear output. Okay, and then I can do, um, let's see, I'm going to do a clear, clear output. There we go. And then um, after we, right before we sleep here, I'm going to do an LED off. Okay, and hopefully you'll be able to see uh, the message here of LED on and off. Okay, that didn't, uh, I think I should have put the, uh, it was too fast for the other one. Okay, anyway, but you can see it uh, kind of cycling through there. Okay, so the next activity, we want to turn on the uh, heater one to 50, uh, turn it on to 80% until T1 reaches 50 degrees Celsius. And we'll update the LED blink time T, and this displays a visual indication of that temperature. Okay, and so let's go ahead and just uh, work through this. We're going to use a while loop. I'm gonna do with TC lab, and I'll connect to it as lab. And then I'll go ahead and just set my heater one to 80%. And then while lab.t 
t1 is less than 50. Okay, when it's less than 50, then we're going to set a t, the time that we're going to be pausing, equal to 50 minus lab dot t1. We're just going to read the temperature here. And then divide by 10. So we're going to pause for less and less as it gets closer and closer to the uh, 50 degree. All right, and then I'll have LED on at 100. I'll put time dot sleep for the T amount of time. And then let's just copy these two again. And I will turn it to zero, and then we'll sleep again. All right, and let's just do the uh, clear output here. I'm gonna try that one more time, just so we can uh, turn it on and then clear output. All right, and all right, and then I'm going to print something. Uh, print, um, let's see, LED. I'll just do, uh, let's do X's for on, and then we'll do circles for off. All right, and let's go ahead and run this now. So if you have the device, you'll see the LED. It'll be turning on and off very slowly initially. Okay, and the heater is on, so it's going to get uh, you know faster and faster until it reaches 50, and then once it reaches 50, the time that it pauses is going to be very short. Okay, so it's going to get, uh, when this gets to 48, it's going to be 2 divided by 10, so it's going to be a 0.2 second pause. All right, so you can see it's heating up. You get a little bit of an indication of what's happening just from here, or if you have the device, you can see the LED uh, turning on and off and that's going to get faster and faster. Okay, so the purpose of this exercise is just to become familiar with some of the commands to control the um, Arduino device with the, temperature uh, with the temperature control lab module on top. And we're just going to be working with this, you know, collecting temperatures or setting the heat values um, throughout the class just to be able to collect data and then do types of analysis with it. I've had some questions about whether this is applicable to other processes as well, and it is. Uh, you can take these same general principles and apply them uh, to many other processes. So you can see the blinking is happening faster and faster, and it's hard to keep up with the display, but um, the LED is really going fast now. It's just going to be a couple seconds, and it finally uh, disconnected. Okay, so it reached 50 degrees. All right, so that is it for uh, this very first one. We talked about how to manage packages, just install some of the packages, and then also an overview of the class and what we're going to be learning um, in terms of um, the six steps for data mining. And uh, this fits well with the overall flow of the class as well, where, where we analyze, visualize, prepare, do regression, classification, interpolation, and then equations.